Good morning, and thank you so very much for joining us for worship from the Mount Zion African Methodist Episcopal Church, 1305 East Chevy Street, Florence, South Carolina. The seasons have again changed, and we're hoping and praying for a new season in our lives. As we move toward the official November election date, please take advantage of early and absentee voting. If we use all of this powerful vote that God has provided us to help ourselves we can usher in a new season in America. Now, for those of you who really know me, you know that if we were in our sanctuary, there would be some things that I would say to you that I probably don't need to say virtually. However, if you have any idea of what I might be saying, then just imagine that I'm saying it and go out and do the right thing. Not only be responsible for your own vote, but make sure that Pee Wee and Quanisha and Junebug and everybody else around you goes to vote as well. We've been granted an extension for the census. Please complete, complete the forms, call in, go online, or do whatever you have to do to be counted because the census is so important for our lives for the very next 10 years. Finally, our sympathy this morning goes out with the family of James Anderson and Cynthia Andrews as they continue to mourn the passing and burial of their sister in Charleston, do know Anderson and Andrew's family that your church family and your pastor are here to assist you in whatever way we can. The Reverend James C. Brown will lead us in prayer, followed by the morning scripture. Daddy, thank you for life, health, and strength, and God, thank you for another week that you brought us to range of seen and, and unseen. And even in spite of what we've heard, in spite of what we've seen, even in spite of what we felt, thank you for being our strength through it all. And so, God, as we gathered in this place, we're thanking you for being our shield, our deliverer, our comfort, and our savior, our joy, our all in all. And even in the midst of the darkness, God, we thank you for being our light. And God, even in the midst of the storms that blow, God, not only are you our peace, but God, you have given us the power when we have the faith to speak to those very storms and say, peace, be still. So God, we pray that as we go through this day, as we go through this new season, that God, we not leave you behind, but God, that we hold ever so, so dearly and strongly to your hand. Continue to guide and direct us and help us, God, continue to use the opportunity that you've given us to witness. God is more than lifting up our hands and singing up songs of glory, but God is using the voices and the abilities and the opportunities to bear witness wherever you've given us opportunity. So, God, we say thank you and have your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In our morning scripture, will come from the 23rd Psalm. Again, the morning scripture will come from the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk. Through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepareth the table before me in the presence of my enemies. God, thou anointed my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever.
your shepherd. Make sure the Lord is your shepherd. Let us pray. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. And let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my great redeemer. Amen. I don't think there's any doubt that people of color in America find ourselves living in some very crucial times. The reality is that 45 and the climate that he has perpetuated and in some instances created is one that is very toxic and especially for people of color. And when I speak of climate and this sense, I'm not just referring to the political climate that is in full bloom as we head toward the November election, but we cannot exclude the social and moral climate that this administration has facilitated since taking office in January of 2017. This country is in a mess. And because we are living in a time that is full of uncertainty, we're not sure when this virus will be under control or if it ever will. And because we know the history of this country, if a vaccine is created, can we trust it as minorities to help us or is it designed maybe to hurt us? We're not sure about the outcome of the upcoming election in spite of what they've perpetuated because we've witnessed firsthand that there are far more people that we've been working beside and living beside every day who feel just like 45 feels about us. We're not sure how much longer we can hold out in this time of economic crisis where many businesses that been forced to, to lay folk off are now being forced to shut down, leaving many of our brothers and sisters permanently unemployed. We're not sure when our children will be able to safely, I didn't say return, but I said safely return to school on a full-time basis to get the education that they desperately need to compete domestically and globally. We're not even sure when we'll be able to get back into our sanctuaries, our places of refuge from all of the madness of this world. So then it is because we are faced with so much uncertainty that we need something in our lives that we can depend on when everything else around us fails. And so my message to you this morning is simply make sure the Lord is your shepherd. This message is taken from the very familiar text, Psalm 23, verse 1, which reads, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. This psalm was written by King David as a testimony of God's faithfulness to him over the course of his entire life. This was not something that he just haphazardly wrote after one little event or one incident, but David took inventory and looked back over the course of his entire life. Thought about where the Lord had brought him from. Thought about what the Lord had brought him through. He thought about his successes as well as, well as his failures, his ups as well as his downs. And through it all, in spite of the fact that his life was with not was not without his share of troubles, he was still able to write these words, the Lord is my shepherd. And when David wrote this, the word shepherd was not just some, some, some fly-by-night word. It had strong connotations. A shepherd was not just someone who kept watch over a flock, but a true shepherd was a provider, one who provided food, one who provided drink, one who provided guidance, and one who provided protection. So when David says, the Lord is my shepherd, what he was really saying is the Lord supplies each and every one of my needs. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall 
not be in want. And so with that, it is incumbent upon each of us this morning to make sure that the Lord is your shepherd. But here's the other part of that. If your shepherd is going to be able to do you any good, you got to learn to follow his directions. The reality is, all of us are taking directions from somebody. I'm not sure, you know, who you're following, but someone or something is leading each and every one of us. But if you're looking for a better life, if you want a secure life, if you want a constant source of support that you can depend on, my recommendation is that you make sure that the Lord is your shepherd. And you see, I don't want us to, to get it twisted. Sometimes we think that just because we're church people, that means that we're following the Lord. You got folk in churches everywhere who are not there because they're following the Lord. We've got to come to the realization that Satan has some of his troops in every church too. That's why there's confusion in some churches. That's why there's conflict in some churches. That's why there are power struggles in the churches. Everybody in the church has not adopted and made the Lord their shepherd. Some folk are listening to somebody else. And the reality is if you watch them long enough, you can tell who folk are following. Because you see, those who follow the Lord they bring peace and not confusion. Those who follow the Lord are not working out their soul salvation for accolades. They're working because they're trying to get closer to Jesus. Those who are working for the Lord and following the Lord, they don't care if what they do never gets acknowledged if you don't ever call their name. So folk following the Lord, they don't come to church because of the pastor. They come to church in spite of the pastor. They can look beyond the messenger and get the message because they're working out their soul salvation. Those following the Lord don't tear others down. They build them up. And those following the Lord realize that God blesses them even when it's inconvenient to be a servant of the Lord. They understand that even if it's raining outside and it's snowing outside and it's time to have a worship experience, they make their way to the church house because they realize that God has blessed them in spite of. They make their way to God's house even when they don't feel they best because they know that it could have been worse than it is. And they come to churches even when the folk that they're sitting beside don't make them welcome because they're not coming to church because it's a place for a popularity contest. They're coming to worship the true and living God. So it's really not hard to tell who folk are following. Just see what's going on around you. Then the last thing I want to tell you is that if you ever want to get your directions from the Lord, you have to be able to listen to what the shepherd is trying to tell you to do. And in order to listen to God, in order to hear from God, you've got to spend time with God. And when I say spend time with God listening to this broadcast, they're not going to do it. When we get back into our sanctuary, just showing up at 9.30, 10 o'clock on Sunday morning is not going to do it. What we're doing this morning is worshiping and praising God. But if you're ever going to get personal direction from God, you've got to spend quality time with God in prayer. Not just the prayer that we do during morning service. Not just the prayers that we lift up in our noonday service. Not just the prayers that we start our meetings with. But I'm talking about time that you spend together with God all by yourself. Because God wants to speak directly to you. God wants to hear directly from you. We believe in intercessory prayer, and I'm a strong advocate of intercessory prayer. But God would much rather hear you talking to him than me talking to him for you. And while I appreciate the prayers of the righteous, you need to know that I plan to pray for myself and, and spend time with God for myself. If I have to go to my smokehouse, if I have to go get up while everybody in the house is sleeping, and every now and then I'll come down to this building when there's nobody here but me and God. 
you need to spend some quiet time with your God on a regular basis, shutting out the rest of the world free from distractions where there's nobody there but you and God so that when God speaks to you, you're not confused about what you're hearing. And you've got to be careful that while you tarry there with God that you move self out of the way. Don't take all your time with God and spend begging for God. First, you ought to be thanking God. And then you got to learn to hear from God. Let God speak to you. And when you learn to let God speak to you, you too, like David, will be able to say, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord, for each and every one of us, stands ready and waiting to be your shepherd. Because when you allow the Lord to be your shepherd, the Bible says you don't have to be in want of anything. You can have that peace that you seek in your life. You can have that direction. You can have that joy. You can have that stability. You can have the love that you're trying so desperately to find looking in the wrong places. You can have the understanding. You can have the success. You can have the job that you want. Young people, you can have the good grades you want. You can have the true friendships that you seek. Everything we want and need is within, with reach, is within our reach in spite of the uncertainty of the world in which we live. All we got to do is make sure that the Lord is our shepherd. First, stay in communion with God. And that's what a prayer life allows us to do. You can't just wait till Sunday morning to start talking to God. You know, you have to take time to talk to God and to hear from the shepherd. <clears throat> Secondly, follow the direction your shepherd gives. Don't you know that if you had it all going on like you think you do, you wouldn't need a shepherd in the first place? I mean, if you were all of that and a bag of chips, why would you need, you know, why would you need a God? Why would you need a shepherd? But I thank God this morning that I've lived long enough to see things differently from the way I used to. I thank God this morning that I've lived and had enough experiences to know without a doubt what God can do and what God will do for those who follow him and trust in his word. The Bible says, I don't know about you, but I, I, I kind of feel like David. And I don't have any reservations in saying right now, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. Somebody put it this way, when the Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing because he makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. If all you got is trouble and trial and tribulation in your life, you need to find out who your shepherd is. Because my shepherd makes me lie down in green pastures and he leads me beside still waters. And he restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, my shepherd is right there with me. His rod and his staff, they comfort me. And he prepares a table. This is a marvelous thing. Prepares a table for me in the presence of mine enemies. That's a powerful statement to your enemies. I'm trying to tear you down, but God is showing me just like he's showing you that I can't do you no harm because the Lord is your shepherd. The Lord is your shepherd. He anoints my head with oil. My cup runs over with his mercy. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. My brothers and sisters, I made up my mind a long time ago. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. Just like he does you, the devil comes after me and tries to get me off track, but the Lord 
is my shepherd. The hellhounds get on my trail, but the Lord is my shepherd. The devil tries to turn me around, but the Lord is my shepherd. And here's what I tell the devil. I trust in God wherever I may be. Upon the land or on the rolling sea, though come what may from day to day, my heavenly Father watches over me. Now, brothers and sisters, in these very crucial and trying times, you need a shepherd. You don't need just any shepherd, but you need a shepherd with a proven track record. You need a shepherd that kept the elders and keeps the church going. You need a shepherd that has always been there when you call him. You need a shepherd that never says no. You need a shepherd like the old folks that he may not come when you want him, but he's always Make sure the Lord is your shepherd. God bless you.
us for worship from the Mount Zion African Methodist Episcopal Church, 1305 East Chevy Street, Florence, South Carolina. Continue to pray ye one for another. Continue to register if you have not done so and make plans to vote. Vote. Vote like we've never voted before as a people. Because as it has been said, a voteless people is a hopeless people. And if we need anything right now, we need hope. Please, my brothers and sisters, vote. Mama Nim and everybody else, get them to the polls. And don't wait. Take advantage of the permission to do early voting, absentee voting. I'm not sure I would trust mail-in voting, but I'd get my ballot and get it on in there by myself, personally deliver it. Again, thank you for all that you do. Continue to pray for this ministry that God will continue to make ways for us to get his word out to his people. The grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, the love of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with you, his people, now, henceforth, and forevermore. Amen, amen. Until next time, amen. <laughs>